Hello. Today I wanted to talk about example 1.1 in the book which talks about excuse me talks about the virial theorem and the virial theorem is actually a very simple theorem it says the total average energy of an electron rotating a nucleus is equal to the average kinetic energy plus the average potential energy or the sum of the kinetic energy plus potential energy it goes on to tell us that the kinetic energy is equal to negative one half that of the average of the potential energy of that electron before I go too far into solving the problem, there are some things that I thought you might need to know first. Um, the example kind of throws in some values with the assumption that you know um, some of the stuff already. Um, just in case you don't, I wanted to kind of clarify that the uh, charge of an electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Um, it gives you this value epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of free space, or the vacuum permittivity, depending on what kind of text you're reading. And that is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter. Um, one farad is equal to a coulomb squared per joule and one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules and that's a 19 19 joules so this is kind of some information you want to know before you go on to solving the problem um, the problem tells you that the ionization the ionization of a hydrogen atom is 13.6 electron volts that is meaning that it takes 13.6 um, electron volts to remove that electron from the hydrogen or to ionize that hydrogen um, so the big kind of concept here is that the zero point or the zero reference energy is that ionization energy of hydrogen so the total energy within the atom now is then classified as negative 13.6 Um, so that's the amount of energy it will take to remove the atom. So for part A, it is asking you to understand, or asking you, sorry, to calculate um, what the kinetic energy and the potential energy is. Um, so the potential energy we will do first. Um, so we can say that the potential energy is equal to 2 times the average energy and that is because our average energy was equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy our pot kinetic energy was equal to negative one half that of our potential energy so our total energy is equal to one half of our potential energy and so we can kind of rearrange that and we get our potential energy is equal to two times um, our total energy so our potential energy then is equal to two times negative 13.6 electron volts so our potential energy equals now negative 27.2 electron 
revolt. And you can kind of follow along in the book as well. So since the kinetic energy, we'll go to this another slide here. So the kinetic energy is equal to negative one half the potential energy. And we can go back and we can see that we we um, had our value of negative 27.2. Sorry. There we go. Excuse me. So our kinetic energy equals negative one half that of negative 27.2 eV and so the kinetic energy is then equal to 13.6 electron volts part B is a little bit more involved it gives you the equation <coughs> for the Coulombic potential energy between two charges, Q1 and Q2. And it tells you that, in the book, it tells you that the potential energy is equal to Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught r naught. Okay, and so what this is telling us is that we have two charges separated by a distance r. This is a somewhat modified version of Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law if you bear with me Coulomb's law basically says the force exerted between two charges is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. That's very horribly written, excuse me. times the charges q1, q2 over their separation distance. So you can see that what they're really telling you is that the potential energy of the two charges separated by the distance r is essentially following Coulomb's law. It is assuming that one of these charges is positive and the other of these charges is negative. What it is basically assuming is that this plus charge is the charge of the nucleus and this negative charge is the charge of the electron orbiting the nucleus. So it's kind of throwing that in there. It's making a, uh, a pretty simple assumption um, here. So it's saying that this charge is the nucleus and this charge is the electron. Um, forgive me for the messiness, but it's, it simplifies this potential energy function into negative E squared, and E is the charge of the electron, over 4 pi epsilon naught r naught. So it kind of creates that simple kind of plug and chug equation. We said up front that the charge of the electron was 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we can then express r naught, or the separation distance r naught. Um, basically what it did was it took Coulomb's law, rearranged Coulomb's law to um, calculate r naught. So I can, I, I'm guilty of skipping a step there. So what happened is back here 
for solving for R naught. So it brings us to this portion of the problem. So R naught is then equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and that's squared because there's two of them. Um, our negative sign was a result of one of the charges being negative. The other part of the operation is 4 pi times the permittivity of free space times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter. We calculated our potential energy, so we rearranged it, so this is our potential energy term. Converting, um, have a conversion factor for joules and electron volts here. So that's what that's what they've added this for. So they want to convert this bad boy to joules. Oops. And I've run out of room. All right through some computer magic. I have kind of rewritten this in a matter of seconds. Um, one thing also to remember that we talked about when we first started solving the problem is that one farad is equal to a coulomb squared per joule. So that is the final conversion. So we have coulomb squared associated with this farad here. And so I will go ahead and um, truncate that. It's coulomb squared per joule meter. So now our coulombs cancel, our electron volts cancel, and our joules cancel. So all we're left with is meters. If you trust the book's math, we ended up with ten to the negative eleven meters, and we are in a very small world, so we want to convert that to nanometers. Nanometers. So that is the end or the answer for part B.